They said it couldn't happen that a small Swedish jet would never stand a chance against America's trillion-dollar F-35. But then came the tests. And in Canada's icy skies, the underdog quietly embarrassed the most advanced fighter on Earth. This is the story of how the Saab Gripen E, built by a country with fewer people than California, just humiliated the F-35 in the very contest that was supposed to prove American air dominance. For decades, Canada has relied on the United States for its air defense, through NORAD, through shared radar networks, through everything from training to spare parts. It was always assumed Canada would fly American. So when Ottawa launched its future fighter competition to replace the aging CF-18 fleet, the result seemed predictable. The F-35 Lightning II was the favorite from day one, backed by Washington, backed by NATO, backed by politics. But in the background, one jet refused to go away. Sweden's Saab Gripen E, a jet that cost a fraction of the F-35. A jet designed to fight in harsh northern winters, off icy runways, maintained by small crews in the middle of nowhere. In other words, a jet built for exactly the kind of country Canada is. Still, most experts laughed. How can a Swedish fighter compete with stealth? How can it match the F-35's technology? They said the Gripen was too simple, too cheap, too practical. But that's exactly what Sweden intended. While the US poured billions into one massive ecosystem, complex software, classified systems, and endless maintenance, Saab took a different path. They built a jet that any nation could operate independently. No dependence on American data links. No secret black boxes that only Lockheed engineers could open no software that had to be updated from Texas. The Gripen E was freedom in a single engine frame. When Canada's fighter evaluation began, the playing field looked stacked. The F-35 had already convinced Norway, Finland, and Denmark. It had stealth, it had momentum, but then came the technical trials. Quiet, methodical tests in cold weather, electronic warfare simulations, and mission planning exercises across NORAD's northern grid. And this is where the story took a shocking turn. Because the Gripen didn't just meet expectations, it exceeded them in areas where the F-35 was supposed to dominate. The Swedish jet's Arexis Electronic Warfare Suite, a modular, brain-like system, proved capable of detecting, tracking, and spoofing threats faster than any competitor. Its distributed sensors allowed Canadian analysts to simulate engagements where the Gripen could see first, jam first, and strike first. The irony? It didn't even need stealth to do it. That's what humiliated the F-35. While America's flagship jet depended on invisibility and massive support networks, the Gripen E showed it could fight smart, outthinking rather than outspending. In Arctic trials, the Gripen took off from short, frozen roads within minutes, refueled and rearmed in less than 10. The F-35, it needed specialized ground equipment, heated shelters, and a team of technicians just to stay running. One Swedish engineer reportedly joked, the Gripen is like a snowmobile with missiles. The F-35 is a supercar that hates the cold. He wasn't wrong. For Canada, this was more than a technical comparison. It was a strategic wake-up call. Because the F-35, for all its advanced capabilities, came with strings. The data it collected would flow through American systems. Its mission software was controlled by the Pentagon. Every upgrade, every maintenance cycle, routed through the US Sweden on the other hand, offered something radical, full control. Canada could build, modify and maintain the Gripen E at home. Saab even proposed to transfer technology and set up local production, making it not just a purchase, but an investment in Canadian sovereignty. And in an era where Arctic defense and independence matter more than ever, that meant everything. Still, politics has its own gravity. Washington lobbied hard. Lockheed Martin showcased the F-35 as part of a joint future for NATO. And the Canadian government, caught between alliance obligations and national needs, leaned toward the American option. 
But among the pilots, the engineers, and the strategists inside Canada's defense community, the conversation began to shift. Because what they saw wasn't just two jets. They saw two philosophies. The F-35 represented dependence, power through partnership, but at the cost of autonomy. The Gripen represented independence, capability through simplicity and control. And in every briefing, every cold weather test, the Gripen proved that efficiency could rival extravagance. The turning point came during a NATO interoperability drill, where simulated engagements were run between mixed aircraft fleets. Gripen's data fusion and electronic warfare performance reportedly caught evaluators off guard. It consistently managed to detect, jam, and evade in scenarios where stealth jets relied on coordination and AWACS guidance. Even without stealth, the Gripen's situational awareness and its ability to vanish in the electromagnetic spectrum earned it a new nickname among observers, the ghost without stealth. Meanwhile, F-35 pilots quietly complained about maintenance delays and software limitations that required ground intervention from the U.S. It wasn't a public humiliation. But within defense circles, the message was clear. The Gripen E had exposed the cracks in America's most ambitious fighter program. It wasn't luck. It was philosophy. Sweden had spent decades perfecting the art of doing more with less. Surrounded by superpowers, they couldn't afford billion-dollar mistakes. So they built a jet that could survive isolation. A fighter that could launch from a stretch of highway, reload under a pine forest, and disappear again. The Gripen E carried that DNA into the 21st century, and Canada, with its vast frozen wilderness, recognized itself in that design. Fast, agile, independent. A jet for a nation that can't rely on anyone else to defend its skies. When the final evaluations ended, Canada's political leadership leaned toward the familiar, announcing plans to acquire the F-35. But inside the Air Force, the respect for the Gripen E didn't fade. Because even in losing, the Gripen had proven something extraordinary. It showed that smart engineering can challenge even the most expensive technology on Earth, that a small neutral nation could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the biggest military industrial machine ever built and make it sweat. And that's why defense analysts today still whisper about what could have been. A Canadian-built Gripen E-Fleet, operating independently, defending the Arctic with precision, costing billions less, and never having to ask permission. The aftermath rippled across the world. Brazil doubled down on its Gripen program. Finland and the Czech Republic revisited their own cost analyses. Even within NATO, voices began questioning whether the F-35 for everyone model was truly sustainable. Because if one small Swedish jet could make the F-35 look bloated and dependent, what did that say about the future of air power itself? Maybe the age of mega projects was ending. Maybe the future belonged to fighters built with brains over budgets. In the end, the Gripen E didn't just humiliate the F-35 in Canada's tests. It humiliated the idea that military strength has to come with a trillion dollar price tag. And as the snow settles over the Arctic runways, one truth remains. Sweden didn't build the biggest jet. They built the smartest. Because in a sky full of giants, it's not size that wins. It's strategy.